You ready to do this, Christine? While you disrespect the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to another episode of the Get Real Is This podcast. Apparently, an unprofessional uh, <laughs> podcast, uh, according to Christine. Unprofessional. We, I am the most professional since I am your co host, Adam Chase Rennie. And I am Christine Chen. Listen, everybody, I think this podcast is taking over the world. It's taking over the populace by storm. Everybody's talking about it on the streets. <laughs> and, and Christine's here saying that it's not happening. And it is. It is happening. We're a professional as professional podcast. And we love Knives Monroe. Thank you yeah. so much for the shout out. We love you. Um, and shout out to his podcast, too. What was his podcast again? Christine? Indie Darling. Indie Darling. Indie Darling. So yeah. listen, go go subscribe to that homies of the podcast friends of the podcast film podcast for film education around the world yes christine this is a free podcast mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes with free podcasts there comes mistakes yes <laughs> there comes mistakes and shit happens you know yes but leave it to christine to be the biggest we're judge. just trying to we're just always trying to be better always be better is that that's 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 all it is I I'm, tr I'm trying to be better, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, have this podcast be the least amount of stress. I want the most amount of candid with the least amount of stress. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah, that, that's good. Like, I just want impromptu conversations that just make sense. That feels like because this is actually us hanging out in real yeah, life. Yeah, it's it really. This is us. This is the only way we get to hang out. That's why we do this podcast. Really. Exactly. Really but good. also, too. <laughs> Also, I didn't like in the very beginning of the pod, like the beginning stages of the podcast, we I really wanted to do a podcast where it doesn't feel like we're forcing like agendas down people's throats and shit. Like right. That, you know, we just right. have like off the cuff. We have topics for sure. I got shit written down. But mm -hmm. does that mean we're going to get to all of them? No. Does that mean we're going to, you know, uh, address every single thing? No. Sometimes we just go on a one giant tangent, ladies and gentlemen. And that's yes. the podcast. Free, free, free tangents. podcast. Free podcasts, tangents. Free podcast. Need I say more? Did I mention <laughs> that this is a free podcast, Christine? <laughs> Go subscribe to I Apple Podcasts and Spotify today. I'm very proud today. of us for having done 63 episodes. That's pretty darn good. Consider we started during the pandemic um, officially. Uh, yeah. Before that, we kind of had something, but it wasn't, we never knew it would be this. Uh, so right. for it to get to 63 podcasts, it's pretty darn good. We've been consistent. And this is with like traveling and this is not our full-time job. <laughs> No, no, it's not. And uh, that's that's, you know, we we do. I feel like we do get better each each podcast, but it does. It, it It's forever. It's forever going to improve, ladies yes. and gentlemen, yes. no matter what. So if you think that this podcast is going to be the pinnacle of of peak performance, it's not. You know, we're going to we're going to do better. We always do better. Yes. Um, so while Christine's not listening to me, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm listening to you. <laughs> Are you though? Are you yeah. feels like feels like you're preoccupied typing on something on your on your on your computer. But that's no, fine. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not slouching. Oh, I mean I'm yeah. I'm adjusting so that this still feels normal, but then I don't look like I'm slouching in the seat. That's all. I see. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So you got the sniffles. You got you got allergies or what's I have this allergies. Okay. Yeah, I have allergies right now. Um, yay, Austin. So that's where I am yeah. right now. You're doing a feature. Yes, soon. I'm doing a yeah. feature tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is day one of production. So How fun is that? A, Are you excited? Yeah, it's been like a mad rush to finish like every I I have this like anxiety where I'm like I have to finish every fun part of my life within today <laughs> yeah no, I know. before before I have no more fun again not and not that like film sets are not fun they are very fun but it's work you know so yeah. I uh, people have been inviting me to 
Halloween parties and stuff like that. And I'm like, you don't understand. I'm trying to like run the Get Realism's um, e-commerce site, which we're gearing up for uh, the holidays. So Black Friday and all that stuff. I'm doing that. I'm built, rebuilding the whole e-commerce you know, user interface and then still running a bunch of other, like I'm still finishing Ursula. That's still, I mean, this is season three Ursula uh, because I'm still in the middle of uh, post-production for that. Yes, exactly. So I'm trying to cram all of that in yeah. the time. And also here's my new goal. I'm really, I'm trying to get back to like a good regimen for fitness as well, which is extremely difficult when you are in the middle of production. So you're trying to work out. Yeah. I always try to work out, but I'm trying to do it more efficiently. Like I, I've been good about getting some sort of movement every single day, but I want something where it's like, Hey, if I just do this for 30 minutes, I will definitely see results, you know? You're already putting in so much cardio as it is as a first AD anyways being on set. I'm also like 36. So I'm the kind that like, I look at a donut and I gain like 10 pounds. So (laughs) I'm 36. Like as if, like, as if this is like your your calling card to (laughs) retirement. Are you out of your mind? What are you talking about? You're the prime of your life. Dummy. you're you're there. You're you're doing it. You're 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 out of my childbearing possible. years are disappearing. <laughs> I get it, but also children are petri dishes filled with diseases. Anyways, it's fine. Oh my god! I'm kidding. Ever, I'm kidding. You, everybody. No, no, no. Have you seen um, the special by Bo Bo Durham? I think is his name. Bo He's Burnham a comedian, or Bo Burnham. Have you seen it called Inside? Mm-hmm. I have. It is many brilliant. times. It is brilliant and there's a song in there that i was uh because my friends uh darren and christine dear friends uh color lion they just had a kid hugo is his name and now i love seeing my stupid friends are having stupid children (laughs) (laughs) yeah no that's exactly what it is that's that's exactly and it's so funny because when when that was all happening there were like so many friends of mine who well not i wouldn't say friends they're they're more of like acquaintances from high school okay. they they're now having children too i'm just like are you guys fucking serious really what I, yeah. but nothing against children everybody if you have children i love i you know kids kids are the earth right kids are the future we we get it i you know I, i'm all about it but what in our in, in our line of profession, there's so much focus to be made on the things that we are doing that to even entertain the idea is, is, and I know people do it. I know how, I know people have balances and they're balanced people. I'm not a balanced man. So they, they have it all down to a science. While for me, I'm just like, I can't even get my shit together, let alone get on the film set on time. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big I listen to podcasts re- re- um, religiously when I'm driving, especially when I have, I'm driving between like Austin and Treeport and different locations. And my favorite things to listen to are like entrepreneurial startup type things. And I, there was a question that was asked in one of these podcasts that I want to ask you. The question is, do you believe in balance? Do you think there is a such thing as balance? I mean, I feel like there's such thing as as doing something more than the other thing and being off balance. I believe that that yeah. happens all the time. And if, but this is a good question. See, like to live in perfect harmony, in perfect balance, it's kind it of an impossible. Per- yeah, I agree. I all the people on that podcast said not all the successful like entrepreneurs on there said that there is literally balance is an illusion because Mm -hmm. you're always going to have more time, spend more time in something that you, you have to spend more time in something you want to be good at it or better at it. So something ultimately in your life has to decrease or take a step back or so, but does that mean that all the time you're going to be spending 
a lot of time and effort in the same category. No, that no. shifts around, right? No. So there's periods of time, maybe work is your priority or certain things. And so that's going to spike. But then later on, your, I don't know, phys- physical well being is what you're focused on. And that spikes and everything else takes sense. So I just, I don't think there's a such thing as balance, in my opinion. I think you're right. I think, I think there, there isn't really. Um, but I, I do think though that like there, 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 there has to be some sort of awareness. Sure. You know, like, like, especially if you do feel unbalanced, quote unquote, you know, like maybe yeah. it, it, that's, that's all the even more power. If you can just identify something's wrong within yourself, because sometimes even Christine admitted it, like we have tunnel vision. We just really cast every single thing that's going on with us like by the wayside so like we just keep focusing and keep doing what we're supposed to be doing christine operates on a different level she she operates on a on a level of like consistency i'm too much of a pothead to really have that consistency so i operate on a level of anxiety where i i will get it done but i'm nervous along the way especially mm-hmm. especially given that all i'm trying to do is strive for balance and i'm trying to look for that all all which way and it's interesting that you bring up that balance really is an illusion like it's It's not it's not really a thing and it's interesting because i i think you're right i think i think there is like such thing as like being aware and mindful of of what you're what you're doing and what you're putting yourself and other people through but does that often you know, translate to yeah. that. It's not. It's I don't think, I think so. I think there's a being mindful of what you put mindful. your priorities into right. and being very intentional about where your priorities lie. But I don't think there is this magical zone where everything is perfectly in homeostasis and like everything operates perfectly. Now there's always going to be something that you just dedicate more time to because you're wanting that to progress further. So, um, because it's yeah. all about trying to improve, right? Yeah. Really at the end of the day, you just want to be better at whatever you're lacking in. Yes. Whatever, whatever it is. Ideally, there's some people who just, I hate to say it, Christine, just want to watch the world burn. But <laughs> there's, there's people who really strive for that man. improving and stuff. Yeah. exactly. There's people who strive for, you know, I, I wouldn't say a perfect world or a balanced world, but an improved world. You yeah. know, I think I think that's the better way of of going about it and stuff. Yeah. That's interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah, I can't listen to those kinds of podcasts because I feel like I'm too dumb for those podcasts. Do you know oh, what I mean? Whatever. Like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, just I'm a big saying nerd. no. It's well, I'm a nerd too. What are you talking about? I love comedy podcast because it's just it, it literally like it's like a, it's like you're eavesdropping on another conversation it's 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 great and i also am a huge i've been a huge howard stern fan since fuck since i was like 11 or 12 before i could even really really understand what howard was even talking about you know i know a lot of people don't like him i you know there i have i have mixed feelings about it too sometimes but you know in terms of having like a conversation that is just not so i don't know fabricated and just just like because there's there's a few podcasts i do listen to like i do listen to npr from time to time and stuff mm-hmm. and some of that is amazing like some of those episodes like they have like serial killer episodes and shit like that oh my oh there's this one podcast i do i do listen to it's called the apology line have you heard about this no i've not heard of that well ladies and gentlemen this is going to be a podcast episode about if podcast. i ever heard one about podcasts. podcasts about podcasts we'll talk about movies we'll talk i i watched a bunch of movies actually recently i just got yeah. a new app too um I'll, I'll talk about uh okay so the apology line it's a podcast about this radio show i think it's like in the northwest somewhere i don't know maybe not north i don't know but it was somewhere in america maybe chicago i don't know i should probably look this up but there's a uh, a radio station that had this thing called the apology line and just just one radio dj uh posted flyers like around the city basically saying like hey call in be anonymous and 
confess everything and anything that you that you hold dark to yourself. You don't have to say your name. You have to say where you're from. You just you call in and you just you basically confess. It's a confessional essentially, mm -hmm. and they have like you get a whole array of of, of people. You know, some less, uh, you know, like <clears throat> terrible than others. I guess you would say, for lack of a better term. But um, there's this one in uh, one episode in particular that was like that, that, that sort of blew my mind. And it was this guy who just basically confessed to murdering a whole bunch of people. Like he just confessed to doing a whole bunch of crazy ass like murders. And like he basically like it almost like he evaporated from the earth. Like right after that phone call, like there was just no way of tracing that line. There was it was no way of like. I mean, eventually they cornered it like they got it through like, you know, I don't know, like over the years they caught him. But, you know, for it, nobody knew who he was and everybody was so fascinated. And every, even people called in to the show saying, like, who is that guy? Like, did anybody like follow up on that guy? Like, that was pretty that was pretty fucking wild. And I don't know if this was like a late night broadcast. But I couldn't imagine like this would be on FM radio like in the morning when you're driving and shit like that, you know. Yeah. But it's it's wild. It's a great it's a great podcast called The Apology. The I don't, I have, you go ahead. The apology. The apology line. The apology line. Line. I I've always wondered why people are so fascinated by murders. I'm not. I'm not. In fact, I'm I'm so drawn away from murders that I'm so murdered out. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm, I my mom is so into murders. Just, my mom loves all types yeah. of like murder shows and shit. Why? I I asked my mom this, and you know what she said? She what? she told me she was like, I like I like the idea of what I could have done to prevent x y and z or what i could have done to run away from this like she pictures herself in that situation how she could have gone like gotten out of that situation oh, of like a murder of some or something right and it's a little i don't know i love my mom to death but nobody's gonna tell you when they're gonna that. murder you i don't think yeah. exactly. <laughs> nobody's gonna tell you when you're getting murdered. They're yeah, not going to call no. you up and be like, hey, uh, so next Tuesday, Christine, uh, you're going to go to a bagel when? shop. And I'm going <laughs> to whack you in the back of that. No, like that's not how it works. You just you have no idea when it's going to happen. And quite frankly, you would wish that it would never happen. That's why I don't watch those murder shows, because every time I watch, I get uncomfortable. I'm just like, I don't want to know about this shit. Like, I don't want to like it. My mom was crazy over the. um there's one documentary. It was like the the midnight midnight killer. I don't know. It was on Netflix and everybody, everybody went fucking crazy for it. it like this murderer. And I'm just like, why do you like, I don't need to. And my mom was like, you got to watch this. It's so good. I'm like, I don't need to. Yeah. I really, I really don't need to. Like I watch so many horror films that you kind of get the point of, of that. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah, and I, I just, I, you know, murder is, I mean, I guess same thing as when you write about it. Um, maybe it's just the psychology of it. Just and like, writing about it is even weirder too. Yeah, like you, you have to really like think in that like mentality, and yeah. I think it's like putting yourself in those shoes and seeing whether or not you can think right in that. Yeah, I don't know. I just think murder is weird. <laughs> like, I think so too. I yeah, it's it's a very it's a very I don't know. Like it just is it, a strange concept to me to to for for somebody to be fascinated over. Yeah. You know, exactly. nothing against people who are fascinated by it. I'm yeah. sure there's great documentaries out there that I don't know about and would blow my mind. I'm sure. But there's just so many of those documentaries that are just like flooding my Netflix queue. <laughs> like I can't even open Netflix anymore without like seeing 13 documentaries on different murderers and stuff or um a cooking show <laughs> great yeah. british bake-off <laughs> that's about it you know so yeah, no. no murder for me it bothers <laughs> me yeah i can't i can't deal with that yeah um yeah so though i mean that that was that's the only podcast i really listen to other than that i'm a dummy i'm a dummy i just listen to a comedy podcast and i just that's not a dummy go that's on like a fart in the wind <laughs> 
yeah no that's just like what you're into and what relaxes yeah. you i think what it is is that like most people just doesn't don't find most i don't think most people like learning things when they're trying to relax like learning things it's like a yeah yes it's like i'm using my brain like they, it's passive versus right what is that something is passive versus oh passive yeah, yeah, yeah. Learning versus yeah so i i just i love intuitive oh, yeah. yeah i just i i i relax by learning i think that's wild yeah yeah i'm weird no so. you're not weird <laughs> we're not weird at all i i watch I watch too many horror films. I'm I'm too weird as as just what it is. You know, yeah. I I I spend m- my time in laziness. Now, I don't think it's laziness, but when my mom comes home and sees me just watching another horror film in, you know, like in the living room or I'm watching it like on my in my in my office or, you know, just wherever she just rolls her eyes at me and like thinks like I'm not actually working. When I am actually working, I am always working. When I'm watching a movie, my brain is always turned on. I can't watch movies where I don't, my brain isn't on. You know, I can't watch a TV show when my brain isn't on. That's why I couldn't enjoy Squid Game. I know everybody loves Squid Game. I love Squid Game. You don't like Squid Game? Everybody loves Squid Game. Everybody loves Squid Game. Okay, I'm, okay, spoilers then for people who haven't seen it. I'm interested in, no, I'm interested interested in knowing why you didn't like squid games it's not that i didn't like it it's 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 not that I, it's not that i didn't like it it's just every time like the the plot line yeah fantastic the plot line's amazing yeah the characters were awesome for the most part for the most part okay. I, there was a couple of that i'm like you know but you know it's for the most part, like the character development, the show, the show in of itself is, is good. It's just for me, when you hype something to the extent where the, the entire country, including my mother is mm. like saying like, Oh, this is Supreme. So you think so it's, ruined, quality. it's ruined for you because it was so hyped and you, your brain might've, gone to a different expectation and because that expectation wasn't exactly what it was then it was everybody was treating this like this was tenant like their minds were fucking ripped in half you know like there was people my mom was like this was this is insane you gotta you gotta watch this and i watched it it is fine it's fine i'm not i'm not belittling like how the show was made or, or or the writing or or any any of that Okay. What I am saying though <laughs> is that I, I have seen like shows or like movies like Squid Game that to me are engaging and and to me are fantastic as well. Mm-hmm. But what can you give me an example? Like Battle Royale. Uh, that that's a I thought that was a movie. It's a movie. Right. It's a fantastic but, movie. What's wrong with Battle Royale? Battle Royale. Okay. You yeah, think Battle that's Royale. better than Squid Games? Yeah, Battle Royale is great. No. Oh, okay. All right. Now you're twisting my words. Now this is fake news. Now now you're getting into <laughs> CNN, Fox no, News I'm territory. Just trying to, now you're twisting I, my I don't words. Know. I, I was one of the ones who loved Squid Games. And I think what I it's, loved. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you love Squid Game. What did you like? What did you love about it so much? I love the art in it. I thought um, the stylized look of it was really cool and how the attention to the design, the costumes, the colors and stuff like that. I loved the acting. I thought a lot of the The acting was was great. The actors were phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Uh, I thought there were points in the script and in the season that I thought were extremely smart. Uh, I love when it's when you could see the shift between the p- people were controlled by the game and then the shift to the game was written for human nature and what human nature has pensions to do That's great. under. I was mind blown at that. That was cool. I think you know exactly which episode that was. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I are you talking like, about the shape episode with the, the cookie? Egg, the egg. The egg. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Man. I was like, oh, this wow. just went up another level. Yeah. So uh, I, I thought that was very fascinating uh, playing with human nature and just our animalistic instinct, right? Um, yeah. I was okay. I was not a huge fan of how it ended ultimately or how neither was I. Yeah, it progressed to that point. But I was going to bring up the ending too. I'm like, yeah, Ooh. but I don't know. I just, it, it I like the old man was, it, is the through line. Yeah. I do like that. Yeah. And I think maybe what it is, is that I, one of my things that I'm trying to do as a director is learn how to play with suspense and building that tension. Mm. And that's been for me, a huge learning curve. Um, because I don't like watching horror and I don't. So like with Ursley, a lot of the things I've been trying to do has been like improving the tension and improving the suspense and understanding like where and how to take time to, to do that. And I think. But you have with Jaws and Goonies. I mean, I know sure, Goonies yeah, yeah. is not a horror film, but it is an adventure film. I mean, yeah. it has some thrills and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. But I just thought that Squid Games did an incredible job when it comes to tension. Mm. Yeah. So yes. I, I will agree I to that. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially during the games, like that during cookie, the games, right? That, because that the stake, cookie game right, was the stakes are so high, fucking nuts. That yeah. stressed me. I had to pause it and take a yeah, break. I was so stressed make a out. Walk, yeah, come back. Yeah, that was yeah. that was that was wild. But yeah, no, I I agree. I absolutely agree. But I can't wait for you to, to say that Adam hates Squid Games. Like I didn't hate it. It's just that, it, that's it, the title. It's, it's fine. Podcast. That's going to be the title of this podcast. That's Adam fine. hates Squid Games. <laughs> Adam thought Squid Games was fine. It's <laughs> fine. Now, but, uh, yeah, tension. In my universe? No. But <laughs> it was still good. Yeah. But yeah, tension, it's this, are the stakes high enough? That's always the, whenever I'm writing and whenever I There's get. There's so many movies with high stakes that mm-hmm. aren't horror, right? Yeah, like, no, 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 yeah, totally. Nolan it's does just, that even. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting when they ask or, what are the stakes what are the stakes i always get that in my uh criticism when it comes to like my writing like people are like that the stakes aren't high enough the stakes aren't high enough and i don't know what that's a question what because stakes is relative to the character right i was gonna say that yeah yeah uh, yeah isn't it relevant to whatever the environment is to begin with so it's not right. like you should have don't have high stakes just for the sake of having high stakes you know for the right. for the story if it doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of the story why would you why would you put in but i guess like you know there there if you want to keep it interesting sure absolutely but i don't know there's plenty of movies i don't have like huge, huge tension stakes. that i that right. i love so much and yeah. i still i still watch those kind of movies like they're i call them like the talkie movies like like um like kevin smith or something like that, you know, like they just have a lot of dialogue. It's not a lot of like, yeah, there are risks and stuff like there's risks being taken, but it's not like, you know, like a Richard Linklater film, you know, it's not like this is, you know, somebody's going to die, you know, yeah. <laughs> he, he's just more of a chill filmmaker who is like films, like slice of life type of type of movies and stuff yeah. like that. You know, I, I just, for me, I know that's been something I struggle with is like, making the stakes high enough or making i don't know Mm -hmm. because i just if if your film isn't about life or death it's then where did this then the how it's struggling to make the stakes high in relative to that character when it's not life or death it's easy to make things to increase the stakes when it's life or death does that make sense it, it, what it am is. I trying to say? yeah but instead so of like, like yeah someone not going away you know or right. being killed 
you know, it yeah, doesn't like, feel like there's a payoff. Be, it's to be like, yeah, if yeah. somebody dies, there's a huge stake. Like that's in reality, that's what it is. But if if your storyline doesn't involve that, what makes the stakes high is all a mental how it mentally affects the character. I guess I don't I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's something that I struggle with writing in writing. No, is I increasing I mean the stakes. I do know what you're trying to say. It just it, it yeah it just feels like you're there's not enough you know uh like uh, consequences or no well, not consequences but like yeah just just having the the stakes being made and also established in the first place too because sometimes like there you know you won't you won't have any stakes but then you know you, you you'd realize like after a second glance at it like oh well maybe you know we can kill off this character and stuff like that i feel like that's easy you know, because I, I and people are like, well, no, there's got to be a death. It's like, yeah, but you're just killing off a character just to kill off a character. Right. Exactly. Like that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me either. So I need to fall in love with the character before. Before I, you're going to go ahead and cut the head off, you know, like right, I kind of right, right. I kind of need to know a little bit more about the character. Then once they do go, I'm going to miss that character, you know, like then. I'm going to have to spend the rest of the movie or the the show or whatever, just wondering what could have, you know, everything like that's, if I can engage my thoughts into thinking like how much I love that character and then it's gone. That's right. I wouldn't say that's like amazing writing because sometimes you can fall flat on your face, like, you know, just, just flat on your face, or it could have been like a, like a like, maybe not a glorious death, but a, but a justified death. And then you see that and you're like, Oh, okay. So I guess that was supposed to happen. You know, yeah. I What's guess that it? was meant to happen. So you, can you name a film where the stakes are very high, but it's not because someone's about to die. Phone booth with Colin Farrell. Damn, that one, that. that one, that one's crazy, but it does have to deal with some sort of, life or death and okay. See, for a moment you think someone died for a right. moment and i guess there is another death too so yeah that doesn't count then. sorry i'm asking this question because i there's a script in the writing that i'm trying to up the stakes a bit more but like, i feel like you would have to be like espionage films that that have like the sort of like high stakes but no death like sort of like all the president's men like about the watergate and mm -hmm. situation what, and what all is, that didn't have good yeah well, have you seen Manchester by the Sea? Yeah, I have. That's that was a good that one. Movie. That so, one's that one's good. What so is the exactly like that? Sort of. So, what is the stakes in that? Is it that he he's going to? It's been a while, and I've seen it in the movie theaters a long time ago. Yeah. So, it. Um... I mean, okay, it was the movie is about he had a haunted past, right? Yes. His past is that he lost his relationship because he basically killed his whole family in a fire. Right. Um. But he's living with that, and now he has a nephew that he's going to have to take care of because his brother dies of a heart attack, right? Yes. So is this what is the stakes in this? Is the stakes losing his nephew he or his his relationship with his nephew? It would be his relationship with his nephew. Those are the stakes. Yeah, I think. Yeah. It's a good question, actually. So I came out I'm 2016. Using, wow. I've, I've, yeah, I'm, I'm using know. that as an example because in root yeah. has that similar structure of there is a bigger underlying issue that the characters are all dealing with, but it's a different storyline altogether. Does that make sense? Like, right. like the storyline is not about the bigger issue. The storyline is about somebody's in between the lines, in between the lines relationship with the relationship. But they're all shrouded by this major event that's happened, and it's a trickle down effect on them. With right, their story yeah, you know. So, so I'm your just question is, to, what's another film like that? Or no, I guess my question is, I'm trying to dissect the stakes of right Manchester by the Sea because I felt a lot of tension in that film. 
yeah, I got to watch the movie again yeah, in order for me to, again. in order for me to really give you a, a good, good answer. Um, yeah, but no, I, I remembered it's a good movie. I love the I, movie. Yeah. yeah. And, and I do remember, yeah, I do remember there wasn't really like, like, I know, yeah, there's some death, but there's, there's, it's not like, it wasn't, it's not, yeah. it wasn't pertaining to the main characters. Exactly. There was you know. death, but the death wasn't like, this is, what causes right. the tension at all it wasn't it was just life right and this is just yeah yeah phone booth was is like that phone booth phone booth but it's more it's more suspenseful it's more of a thriller it's it's sort of like um it's an isolation film mm. sort of like uh like tom hardy and um Locke. have you ever seen that movie i like Locke, but yeah Locke it's, had it was, a lot of tension so the the stakes yeah. of that is no one died in that movie too actually no yeah but the stakes was re- it was a relationship as well the stakes was his relationship with and his, his job wife. well, well no, he, oh, no you're right you're right no it was with his wife because he was having a ex- extra marital relationship and that that lady was pregnant right right but he had to tell his wife because he was on the way to and basically he dis- not only destroyed his marriage but his family like yeah. he had kids and he was like, yeah, I'm not going to be home. And he was like, but wait, we have a, we have a football game. We're going to watch like, yeah. you know, and yeah. he was like, I'm actually not going to come home. And that's the yeah. most heartbreaking thing ever. Yeah. yeah. And also to too, like, again. and also like the first 30 minutes. So captivating because he loses his job. Like he just, I spoiler alert. I'm sorry for people who haven't seen it. But it's it's engaging. I'm not really spoiling anything because how he addresses it in the phone call and his Tom Hardy's character in a calm, cool manner. Yeah. But I you can see you again. can you can hear an underlying panic in his yeah. voice as well. And he's also sick too. They added that layer. He had a cold. Yeah. You know, like he's coming down from a flu. You know. Um, yeah. I need to read that script again. Yeah. I don't know why they made that decision for him to have the flu, but it, I guess it worked, you know? Yeah. I really want to watch that. I'm, I'm going to go and, and read the script. Um, but yeah, there's something about that. Cause that was super high stakes as well, but nobody died. Nobody. It was the, it was the stakes was literally his, his life. It, this, this was the stakes life as he knew it basically in life as it's in the future. So his stakes was the life as he's had and experience is about to be destroyed. And right. it's that tipping point between like, how much of it is he willing to destroy for the sake of this other event, you know, that will maybe define the rest of his life in some capacity that he, that is unknown. So that that's the stakes. His life as it he knows it is about to mm. be completely utterly destroyed. And the question is how much of it is he willing to destroy? Yeah. That is a question. How right? much of it? Yeah, because it, it's his current marriage, his current job, his current right. How much of it is he willing to give up? Sacrifice. So it's what what is the sacrifice? What is the sacrifice? Is the, yeah, it's sad, but but the last twenty minutes there's a payoff too. Yeah, there's sort of a payoff. Um, but yeah, throughout the movie you're like, there's no way this guy's gonna, you know. Yeah, it's the cinematic question. I guess is what they call it. What is the this cinematic? What is the question? Cinematic question. Mm. So, huh? Yeah, I'm. I'm a. When I hit this finish this next project um that i'm aging on i'm about to buckle down into writer's mode so i'm i think i'm in that mood of dissecting and finding similarities with scripts that i'm trying to invoke that same are you trying to watch movies too that invoke the same i need to i think i i think i need to read versus watch because first because i'm trying to write and then i tend to watch when i'm directing does yes. that make yes yeah, so no, because i'm the same way yeah. um i uh i have i just finished um the running man 
by Stephen King. Okay. And that is great. It's sort of like Squid Games, but not really. There's no really like, there is death, death, but it has nothing to do or pertaining to the main characters whatsoever. And there's a more bigger stake that I won't say. Okay, please. It's like Stephen King's like little little nugget of uh, awesomeness. Yeah, Um, yeah, fantastic book. And it's an easy read too. I I don't know if it's like, it's not as big as it. I think like it's maybe half the size. I don't know. Like 600 pages, something like that. But I just finished it. Like I, I have the, uh, the Kindle app on my, I I don't know. Like you can get free books through Kindle and shit like that. Like you Mm -hmm. can get like certain books for free or heavily discount. I had no fucking clue. And I'm like, I have an Amazon prime account for five years and I had no (laughs) fucking clue. I had this. So I just started reading books and I finished running man. And I'm like, I never seen right. Running Man, but I've read it. I read Shining. I read all his short stories and shit, but never yeah. Running Man. And Running Man's more of his like tame stuff, you know, but it does a lot with psychological shit. Mm-hmm. And I think you'll really dig it. I think you'll like okay, it. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. book. Yeah. But don't watch the Arnold Schwarzenegger film. That one, that one's not great (laughs) okay not great but edgar wright is gonna make uh, a running man film i'm very excited for that Mm. very excited same director as baby driver very good oh cool yeah he's gonna make running man a lot yeah um yeah have we done an hour (laughs) yeah that was an interesting tangent we talked about tension and the cinematic question and how to raise stakes but without death Mm-hmm. And how balance is an illusion. And how balance is an illusion. It is. And that Adam hates Squid Games. Yeah, I knew we were going to mention that. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was going to be. In conclusion, that. Adam hates. Squid uh, games. Adam <laughs> is disgusted by Squid Games. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so, have we, are we, That's you got to get out of here, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Well, I hope you had fun. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for chilling. Uh, tune in next week. Oh, go on earslyfilm.com for the previous episodes of uh, our podcast. And also, we're we're putting out our backlogged episodes on Spotify and uh, uh, Apple, Apple Podcasts Podcast. and all the it's other basically podcasts. Basically, all apps. the other podcasts. Yeah, it's and it's if you wherever can, you get your podcast and goodness, you find it. You'll yeah. find it. Search it. Get Realism's Pod, and then we're there. Uh, that's it uh, for me. And go on getrealisms.com too. Pick up your book, your second edition of Get Realisms. Do it. Yes, and also be on the go. Go be on the lookout on the site getrealisms.com. That's the only place for now that you can get the book. And we're about to do some cool holiday specials. So, ooh, I know. Oh, yes. And G. Yeah. So you guys are like a real fucking business i know My goodness. yeah so go, go it's a good it's really great for anybody who is wanting to get onto a set and stuff and so if you know a friend who's getting into the industry or you know if you have a hard time explaining to your friends or your parents or people that you care about about what you do the get realisms products basically bridge that gap so it's a it's fun, easy to understand and educational. So and you're gonna show up to set like a like like you've done this before. Like how many sets have you worked on? And this is my first one. What? Yeah, and that's by <laughs> get realisms, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. All right. Well, Christine, was there anything else that I that I missed? That's it. That's then it. that's it for me. And that's it from us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Instagram. We happy love you. Halloween. Oh, happy Halloween. Yes. Stay safe happy out there. Um, and don't don't uh you know, don't accept strangers' candy. All right. <laughs> I will see you guys later. Take care. Happy Halloween.